Hey folks, Rob here, bringing you another one of our D-Day commemoration videos. This one's going to occur on 10 June 1944, and it's going to see a plucky German hero by the name of Rudy Brosch with his Panderschreck and a couple of ads that's going to attempt to eliminate some British Sherman. So it's a very small scenario. It comes in dispatches from the bunker uh, number 14, and it is DB029. Uh, takes place on half of a deluxe board, which is, you know, is the larger hex vari uh, variants, and it's only three and a half turns. So, quite small troop counts. We got two half squads with two leaders and five anti tank weapons. Now, this uses the optional Panzerfaust rules where it's a physical counter, not rolling per the squad. Um, and the British, for their part, also have five Shermans, and they have three half squads in the leader who enter as riders. So, the concept is simple. These roads up here don't exist, nor does this little segment. It's only this one here is the garden path during which they have to travel in convoy formation, and they cannot leave until such point as disbanding occurs. Now, disbanding only occurs under a couple circumstances. Primarily, they need line of sight to a enemy is going to be the biggest one. Um, so once the first vehicle gets destroyed, hopefully, then we can um, uh, disband our column and we can... Uh, break into different formations. Now, victory conditions are uh, fairly simple. If one AFV makes it off this hex here, then the British win. Uh, if they are still a good order mobile British AFV on board, the British will win. So the Germans basically have to neutralize all five tanks or make sure they bog. Now, there's plenty of bog terrain because Bocage costs half your move and it is a bog check with a plus three and because they have normal ground pressure remember no box or circle around the id then it's going to be an extra plus one so on an eight or more your vehicles are going to get bogged and if it's bogged it's no longer considered mobile which will uh, uh prevent the british from winning so you got to be very careful how you do it now the way that you can exit off the board is really going to be along the road so once these wrecks start showing up, because this sunken road is also considered a single lane, which means you cannot bypass wrecks, you must push them out of the way. So if with any luck we can get a couple of wrecks, um, it'll be difficult, if not impossible, for the British to come through the road. They're going to have to negotiate the bocage, which is symbolized by this artwork here. You can see the little brown texture around the green. Now bocage, if you've never used it, is essentially a wall that's a one level obstacle that you can see through so think of it like a hedge on top of a wall it's a full level obstacle and uh, it will block certain lines of sight um, as well now uh, in terms of defense so as we said we have uh, a couple of squads let's unhip them for now uh, over here I've got a half squad with a Shrek and a Panzerfaust and over, oh wait, he's supposed to have that. Let's give him the Panzerfaust. Um, we have two half squads with a Shrek and a Panzerfaust, and Panzerfaust respectively, and then our two leaders have this. Now again, according to the SSR number two, uh, Brash is the 8-1 and he's heroic. However, he does not suffer wounds like a hero does, he just like a leader does, which means that he won't break, However, uh, he could be wounded multiple times, and with him, um, he's going to have a minus two to his wound check as well. So basically what that means is uh, when he's wounded, only if he rolls a six on a sex second or subsequent wound will he die, which means he can take a lot of damage. So, uh, All right, let's look at the... Um, SSR. So EC are moderate with no wind at start. Now we're going to have burning tanks because the Shrek has a to kill of uh, uh, 26 and the German uh, Shermans only have uh, frontal armor of 8. So it's going to be an 18 and a 9 or less is going to be a flaming wreck according to the destruction table. So there's going to be a lot of flame, which means this burnable terrain, the orchards and the woods, are probably going to be catching fire, depending on what it shapes up. But at start, we're not going to have any wind, and ECR are moderate. Bocage and sunken lane rules are in effect. So again, this is basically treated like a one-way bridge. And um, one other thing about the um, hero 
is that he gets a um, his Panda Shrek, if he uses one, has a rate of fire of 2. Normally there's no rate of fire, however with him it's a 2, so if I roll a 1 or 2 and the color die, we're looking at second shot. But that only applies to him. And he also gets a minus 3 ATMM if he wants to jump on a tank in combat. Now the other two uh, SSRs, one of them is really interesting, it's number 4. Um, the first time a British AFE becomes a burning wreck... And it is adjacent to another one, which, given convoy formation, is going to happen. Um, on a subsequent 5 or a 6, that burning turret has blown off the tank and landed on the adjacent tank, subsequently destroying it. Now, this is what happened in history. He is able to kill the first tank, which the turret flew off and landed on the second tank, destroying it. And then he was able to run to the rear and take out the last tank in the column, and thereby basically pinning him in... in um, in the kill zone so uh to replicate that they come up with this ssr if i roll a five or a six on a burning wreck then that turret has blown off and it landed on any adjacent heck and a core hex and destroyed the vehicle as well finally uh to force the vehicles down the road the convoy cannot disband and they can only use enter uh they can only enter road hexes until such point as they see an enemy and or uh, they're destroyed, there's gaps in the convoy, that kind of stuff. Now, because the German forces set up hip, um, then uh, they're not going to be seen until the last minute. All right, and that's basically the scenario in summation. So let's get to it. Uh, let's hip these guys again so that the British don't know where they are. We'll start off with the British turn one, wind change. We have no wind. And we go right to the movement phase. So column formation is uh, units moving like this in column, or convoy is the same idea. And you always expend, oh, and I should mention that at start, they've expended half their move. That's why you see seven here. Now, uh, everybody pays the most expensive cost. You cannot enter or re-enter a hex you've left. There's several other limitations uh, involved with convoy. Again, I made a video on that. So I'd recommend you go watch that if you're unfamiliar. But So they've expended one. Now they're going to expend two, three, four, five, Now, I could fire at this point, however, uh, right now I can only see the lead tank. Because of the rules of sunken lane and roads, I cannot see F3 from E2. Uh, it's not in the line of sight, so I'm not able to shoot at that hex. So I'm going to have to wait for them. I'm going to have to wait till they expand one more move for a total of 13, of which uh, two of them have been spent in my line of sight. Now I'm going to uh, unhip and I'm going to fire. All right, so remember our hero, him first. Uh, we're also going to have wall advantage because of our positioning. Uh, we're going to fire his Shrek. Now his to hit roll is going to start off with a base 9. To that, we're going to add minus 1 for a large target. So that brings it up to a 10. Plus, he's heroic, so it's going to be an 11. However, because the vehicle is move moving, it's uh, got plus 2 for motion, and it only spent 2 MP in my line of sight, which is going to be a further plus 1. So from 11, we go down to uh, an 8. So an 8 or less, and I'll get a hit. All right, so I rolled a turret hit, and I rolled a rate of fire. Remember, if I roll a 1 or 2, he gets a second shot. So uh, we have a turret hit. Now, anything... 9 or less will be a burn. Alright, so this thing is a flaming wreck. Alright, and now we have to roll, because of SSR number 4, a 5 or a 6. Alright, roll the 4, so the turret landed close to it, but did not land in E3. Here, he's got a Panzerfaust. Now, uh, with them, we don't have... Um, well, we're looking at a 1 hex range of base 8. Again, with this guy, he's large target, so it's up to a 9. Motion and one movement point in line of sight is going to 
bring it down to um, a five or less. So, uh, sorry, six or less will need to hit. Is that right? No. Base eight, one for target size is a nine. Motion vehicle is a seven. And one MP in sight is a five. So five or less, and the Panzerfaust will hit. All right, so the Panzerfaust hit. Now, a Panzerfaust is ridiculously strong. It's got a 31 kill. So in this case, an 11 or less will be a flame, and a 12 will be a dud. All right, so we have another flaming wreck. This guy is destroyed automatically because he suffered a collateral attack and his vehicle was destroyed. So this is a wreck. We have another blaze on that. And uh, next thing we can go to this guy here, we're gonna unhip him. Now all this is done when they spent that last movement point in his line of sight, um, or in their line of sight. So uh, they still have one more move left, but there's only three tanks left to go. Now this guy is gonna be the same thing. He's gonna need a base eight. Target size brings it up to a nine. Motion vehicle down to a seven. And because he saw it for two hexes worth, um, he'll only have to pay an additional plus one. All right, we have another hit. Uh, again, this is a Panzerfaust, so it's going to need a anything but a 12 will be a flame. All right, so that's a wreck. And it is on fire. All right. Now that's it for the movement phase. So um, I should say we still have one move. So these guys are going to stop for 14. These guys are going to bail out. So that means they're going to require morale checks. So the 8-0 is fine and the 247 is broken. Uh, ELR is 4. It's just an NMC. So yeah, you're just broken. but you're beneath the vehicle. This guy's gonna bail out as well. And he also suffers the same fate. So bailing out a vehicle is usually never a good thing, but we did not have enough moving points left to stop and unload the normal way. Now, with your 14th point to stop, this vehicle was spinning its turret, which is one reason why we're gonna say that they bailed out. Oop. Turret, T-C-A. And we're going to fire our four firepower coax, have because we moved, however, we're adjacent, so it's going to be a four flat. Seven on the four is a pinning task check, and he is fine. And now we can do the main armament uh, in our advancing fire phase so that we get acquisition. All right, defending fire, uh, we don't have any, and advancing fire phase. So here we're going to fire the main armament, just like I said, to get acquisition. So our to hit roll will not be enough. We need a base 8. Um, hatches down, brings that down to a 7. Because we were moving, we don't get the um, the um, point blank range. Actually, we do get it now. So that will be a minus 2. Um, so a net minus one, which means we're going to need a base nine or less to hit with our main gun. All right, not a critical, but we do hit. So on the 12, we have a dud round. All right. So that's that. And then we go to road phase. Now, you guys are not considered open ground. Again, there's no LOS between these two. So you're more or less uh, hunkered down, plus you do have shelter in the form of your AFE. Uh, you will count that for uh, not open ground purposes. Uh, right, so advanced phase. Um, you guys are actually going to route to this location here. Close combat, none to be had, and we're into the German turn one. Wind change die roll. Now we have 
don't have to worry about flame spread right now because there's no wind and we need wind in order to blow it up to the uh, adjacent trees so there's no wind change and we do have rallies so you guys are going to need snake eyes one two now we do have acquisition i forgot to put down you actually are acquired onto this location All right, so let's go to uh, German movement phase. I'm not going to have any prep fire. Let's keep you guys hip for now. You guys are going to assault move into F2. All right, so uh, we've uh, salt moved into that hex, which means we can fire now our 12 firepower is at six doubled with a plus two for the wall. So we have a nine on the 12, which is an NMC. So our hero is fine, and the two for eight is pinned. All right, and now we're going to fire the main cannon. So this is going to be a plus two for the wall, minus two for the range with a plus one buttoned up, so I need a seven or less to hit. So I hit, and um, on the 12 table, we got a seven, which is gonna be a one check. Seven on the 12 is in fact a one check. So our hero is fine, and the half squad is broken. Now, because um, we fired uh, We've already fired once, and but he's going to kill us. I'm thinking of intensive firing. So we have an acquisition now. So we would have minus one for acquisition, minus two for range. Against that, we would have plus two for the wall, plus one for buttoned up. All cancels out, and then we add a plus two for intensifier, which means I need a six or less to hit. All right, so I do hit with my second shot. I have intensifier. And on the 12 table. Dud round. Seriously? Okay, that was bad luck for the British. Now they're going to die. Uh, you are going to come back to this stone building. And you guys are going to unhip. And you guys are going to move. Where am I going to move you to? You're going to go one, two, three, four. Yeah, that's fine. All right, uh, so moves are done. Let's go to defensive fire. I don't really have anything. I can't see for this guy. This guy's already intensified, so he's done and advancing fire phase now we're going to fire a shrek into you so we have a base nine we have a plus one for target size we'll bring that up to a nine sorry minus one on the die roll would bring the nine up to a ten he's heroic brings it up to an 11 to hit against that we have um advancing fire phase is going to be a plus two so that is a nine uh so we have a base nine to hit Yeah, that's all I can see. Target size. Heroic. Is a total of minus two. And then uh, advancing fire phase is a plus two. So yeah, we're going to need a nine or less to hit. All right, so I rolled a turret hit. And again, anything but a 12 because we have a 26 for a kill, minus eight for the armor would be, and I'm not even counting aerial factor right now, this is from the front, 
would be 18, half of which is 9. So 9 or less, we have a flame. And we have a flaming ray. Um, now we'll do uh, route phase. So the attacker first. Um, you're going to come into this location here. That would be uh, three. No, that would be two for the bocage. This would be four. And that would be six. So you'll make it into that building. We're going to go to... You guys have the route now because he's heroic. So you guys will move underneath this vehicle. I think that's fine. And then we'll do advance. So you're going to advance into there. You guys advance into there. And we're into the British turn two. All right, so uh, again, we have no wind yet, so we don't worry about spreading because we're only vehicle on fire right now. Now we'll do the wind change. No wind. Almost had gust. That would have saw some flame spreading for sure. All right, now we do rallies. So this guy needs a snake eyes as to you. So one, two, nobody rallies. DM will come on. Uh, I should stay on because they're heroic. And you guys will be able to rally as well. You need a three. All right. Uh, the British have to move. I cannot fire. Or I should say I've got two choices. One, I could fire on this unit and hope I kill it, in which case I'll be safe until this guy lands. Or I start up and I back away and try and keep this guy alive. I gotta be careful that I don't drive through Bocage because that would be a bog check. So if I wait till the movement phase, I would have to lose half my firepower on my machine guns. It would be a 6, not a 12 for adjacency. It would be a 6 up 2. But I would be in motion. Or started. He could fire on me without me being in motion, which means he would have minus one for target size, minus two for heroism. So he would need be he would be hitting me on an eleven. So I don't think I have a choice. I think I actually have to shoot him this time. Um alright, let's fire. 12 firepower machine gun. 12 up 2. Wow. So we have a 4 on the 12, which is a 3 morale check. And therefore he is wounded. Okay, now we're going to fire the main cannon. So this will be plus 2 for the wall, minus 2 for range, plus 1 for buttoned up. So 7 or less. And that is a miss. If I intensive fire, so the wall and button up will be get rid of by the range and the acquisition. So it would be a plus two for intensive fire, which would bring it down to a six or less to hit, which I think I need to do. All right, so uh, the gun's not broken, but I missed. This is acquired twice. And now I go to defensive fire phase. All right, our hero here. We're going to need, um, again, minus one for size, minus one for heroism. It's going to be an 11 or less to hit. Now, I almost broke it. I only get one shot, but that's enough. It is a hull hit. And again, a nine or less will be a flame. All right, so we have a flame wreck. Game over. Yeah, short, uh, brief scenario. It only took me 30 minutes to talk about it and play it. Uh, I actually played this a second time, and this is the second play that you're watching. The first time I did it just be to, to try it out, I'd actually forgotten the last half of this Good Order Mobile British AIV because 
Uh, I actually had a tank that was alive, and I stupidly tried to run through Bocage, becoming immobile. If I had not, if I had kept him down here where he was, I actually would have snuck in a victory because uh, it wasn't destroyed, so... Or mobile. Or uh, immobile. Um, but yeah, nice little scenario. Quick little one-off. You know, it's a, uh, a good beer and pretzels kind of scenario, probably. Uh, but again, uh, victory for the Germans on this one. Uh, they got all five tanks. The only thing left are these guys, which will run to probably F5, and then they'll have to route or uh, recover. But again, it's only about the five tanks. And uh, yeah, it's a German victory. So let me know what you guys think of brushing the British. Uh, DB029 from Dispatch from the Bunkers, uh, number 14. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.